Hello folks, Jason Christman here at JC's Bees. And boy, I tell you, this seems very familiar. And I'm going to tell you why. Because yesterday, I recorded this whole video, got it all done, took it inside to edit it, and evidently my microphone wasn't plugged in all the way, and there was absolutely zero audio. It was just my mouth doing this. That ain't going to work. So I'm out here this morning, redoing the video. I just can't get enough. I just love working with the bees and love sharing this information. So here I am, out here doing it again. Hopefully this time, my mouth has some words coming out of it that you can all hear. What we're gonna talk about today is lighting your smoker like a pro. I can't tell you how many times in the past I lit my smoker, gave it a couple good puffs, and went to go work the bees to knead it again in a few minutes and realized that it went out. Very, very frustrating. So today I'm going to show you how to light your smoker and not have any more issues. I'm also going to discuss a couple of the options you have for smoker fuel. And I would also like to share some of my local flowers that are in bloom over in my nuke yard. Pretty excited about them. So what we're going to do is we're going to hop right straight to the smoker. And then after that, we'll finish up with some of my flowers I have in bloom. Do you see that bee? Just nearly took out my right eye. Pew! I'd still make the videos with one eye. I'd be out here like, folks, this is how you do it. That's how I would do it. Yeah. So let's dive right into the smoker, and then we'll go check out these beautiful bee flowers. Okay, so to begin with, let's go over your options for smoker fuel. And I only have a few here. What we've got here is wood chips. This is bedding bought from TSC or Tractor Supply Company. These are just pine uh, wood shavings that are really thin. These will work great as smoker fuel. The one problem is, is they're pine. So they do tar up or gum up your smoker rather quickly. What we have here is pine needles. Um, it just so happens that my property um, is lined with pine trees all the way around it. So I have these at my disposal anytime I want them. And they're completely free. So I like this option. The downside about the pine needles is they are pine. And they tar and creosote up very, very quickly, just like the wood chips. Actually, I would say probably a little bit quicker than the wood chips. Um, if you look here at the inside of my smoker, you can see how gummed up it is now. And that's what I've been using recently is the pine uh, needles. What we have here is smoker pellets. Just like you see here. They're actually grilling pellets. They're not smoker pellets. They're grilling pellets. Whatever the difference might be. Um, I guess the difference would be is these are mesquite. You wouldn't necessarily throw mesquite wood pellets into your stove. Now these light very very easily and burn for a very long time. Unlike the pine shavings or the pine needles. Um, with the pine needles or the pine shaving you're going to want to pack it in there tight and if you have very many hives to go through you're probably going to have to add fuel about halfway through. With these if you put enough of them in it's going to last for a long 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 time. Matter of fact you'll probably be done and your smoker will continue to smoke. What we have here is something I call a cardboard cake. And I'm going to demonstrate here in a second how to make this. And all it is is corrugated cardboard that I've rolled up. And uh, you simply drop it down in the smoker, like so, and you, you light it. And that particular thing right there will last several hours too. So this could be a good winter project. Sit down, make a whole bunch of these, throw them in a, in a milk crate, and keep them till spring, and you've got your smoker fuel ready. So like I said, I'm gonna show you how to make this in just a second. Um, as far as the wood pellets, I bought this particular bag over here, which is 20 pounds, and I think I got it at Royal King. I think it was on sale, but I don't think I paid any more than eight bucks for it. And uh, I tell you, it wasn't much fuller than it is now and uh, I've only used a couple handfuls out of it just because it works it for such a long time so very good investment on the wood pellets but it is an investment this option is free and this option is an investment this option 
is also free if you have access to cardboard. And which in today's world, with everybody using Amazon, there's no reason not to have cardboard. So let me show you my little trick here real quick. I learned a long time ago, you know, your normal routine for lighting your smoker is you take some newspaper or some paper and put in the bottom or maybe even some pine needles and you stuff them down in there and you take your lighter and you light that little bit once it gets gone you puff it and you add more is that your normal routine um that's that's the normal routine i see from everybody well i'm going to change that up today and i'm going to use different smoker fuels just because i've already got them out you use what you have I'm going to throw some pellets in there even. This routine I'm about to show you is very, very quick, very simple, and your smoker seems to stay lit a lot longer than the way I just described, where if you light it with a lighter, um, you know, let me continue on with that. You know, usually after you light it with the lighter and you get your fuel on top of the flame and you got it smoking real good, you close it up and you go work the bees and five minutes later, you notice the bees are starting to show some aggression. You grab your smoker and you get to smoke the bees and the smoker went out. How frustrating. Well, this trick I'm going to show you, you're not going to be so frustrated. Let me slide this stuff out of the way. Now you will need a propane a torch, a Coleman or whatever you prefer. And what we're going to do, and I've done this for for about a year now. Um, I actually seen somebody show this trick on Facebook and I thought, well, I'm going to give it a try. So for about a year I've been using this trick. I've just, I guess, neglected to share it with you all until today. Um, so don't think this is going to hurt your smoker because as you can see, my smoker is not damaged anywhere. It does have a slight discoloration on the side here, but I'm not bothered by that. I'm going to show you why that's discolored. What you're going to do is you're going to light your, your torch. Right on the side of the smoker, towards the bottom. Hold the torch there for a second. Wait for it to start glowing. You see how it's glowing now? Now what we want to do is give it a couple puffs of the bellow. See that? Now we're going to come up a little bit and light a, little, a spot a little bit higher. Still puffing on the bellow. Maybe create a little line going up and down. That way you're sure you've got plenty of material burning in there. There you go. Remove the torch. You're done. Smoker is going. Now I'm going to puff it a couple times. And then I am going to take it over on the hives. And I'm going to set it behind me in the background while I record the intro to my video. And I'm not going to puff it anymore. And um, when you see this part of the video and you think back to how well that smoker was puffing, realize it didn't go out. He might be on to something. Okay, so to make the cardboard cake, what you're gonna need is some cardboard, some corrugated cardboard. And um, I've got two pieces here, approximately 16 to 18 inches long. And then I've got another one that's about 10 inches long. So I'm going to use all these to make one cake, and I've also got just a piece of regular baler's twine. I'm going to set the baler's twine off to the side, and I'm going to move these two pieces of cardboard off to the side, because I don't need them just yet. And we're going to start on one end of the cardboard and just start rolling it tightly. Keep rolling until you get close to the end, and try and keep it tight. The tighter you get it, the longer it's going to burn. When you get down to where you have three or four inches that's not rolled up, you're going to take your other piece and just simply overlay it right in the roll and keep on rolling. Pretty simple to make and they do burn for a very long time. Okay, got a couple inches left, the next piece on and continue to roll okay after we get it all rolled up we're going to take our twine we're going to wrap it around there a couple times and we are going to tie it now one thing that's important when you uh, go to pick out your cardboard make sure it doesn't have any box tape on it if it does 
maybe go ahead and remove it. I also like to avoid cardboard that has ink on it. So if the cardboard's got a picture that says Amazon Prime, I wouldn't use that piece. I would only use the pieces that are brown. Just my personal preference, but there you go. Cardboard cake with no icing. Okay, so let's check out some flowers. Before we get over to here, let's turn back this way a little bit. This is where my driveway comes in. Um, several of my new customers will see this and be very familiar with it. Right here along my driveway, I have some rows of Sharon's, which are in full bloom and the bees absolutely love these things. You'll see them out here every day working them while they're in bloom. We got a white one, we got a purplish colored one, and another purplish colored one. Very, very pretty flowers. They smell really good too. Um, you come on around this way, and this isn't actually beneficial to honeybees. I just liked it. And I don't know its actual name, but I believe it's called a bobo bush. Very, very pretty. Huge flowers. Okay, over here to my pollinator garden, which I have just up from my nuke yard. What we've got here is something that's called wing stem. Now, wing stem gets very tall. These ones here that you're looking at are pushing probably eight, nine feet tall. Let me bend one down so we can get a look at it. A lot of people is going to see this plant and say, I didn't know what that, that's what that was called. So when you see these blooms, this is wing stem. Now one way to identify wing stem is just to look at the stem. Let me find a good for instance here. Here you go. Let me get over here where you got better light. Come on Jay, get with the program. On the stem, there is these veins, and I'm trying to get to where, here maybe you can see them. These are raised up off of the stem. You see this over here on this edge? This whole thing is like a leaf coming out of the side of the stem or something. It's very hard to describe, but that's the wing on the stem for wing stem. Okay, right here what we have. This here is white sweet clover that has yet to bloom. All of this, white sweet clover. What we have here is called Joe Pie Weed. Um, you usually see this out in fields or pastures right along with ironweed. And ironweed has a purple top where the Joe Pie has a pinkish top. Uh, what we have over here is more wing stem. Here's some more wing stem, more wing stem, wing stem, more Joe Pie. You see the leaves on that Joe Pie, so you can identify it. Um, over here we have Echinacea or Coneflower, as it's often referred to. And a real close look alike to the sweet clover is alfalfa, and that's what this is. We come on around to the other side. Oh, look. Coming in to get some nectar. More sweet clover. More sweet clover. Sweet clover. Uh, milkweed. Milkweed. Wing stem. Another piece of Joe Pie. Um, right here I have some really colorful uh, milkweed, which I'm hoping will produce some seed, but you can see it's got a little ways to go. But it's different than any color we've ever seen. I think they're like yellows and reds and all kinds of crazy colors. I, I don't know. The, the wife ordered the seeds off of the internet, inter, interweb. And uh, we're just experimenting with them. So that's that little pollinator garden. Now if we come down here, I've got a couple other things I'm pretty excited about. right here and I have some here and down here on the end of this and then my driveway excuse me my driveway is a loop loops around this part of the bee yard and right back out to the road um, I have some more of this stuff growing right there and growing right there 
But what this is, is called Virginia Mountain Mint. And the bees absolutely love it, as you can see. They're working it already, first thing in the morning. I originally discovered this at the beef farm that we lease. And uh, I started noticing bees on it as I was going through the pasture. And I thought, boy, I'm going to take some of that home. So I collected seeds, and the rest is history. Now I've got it growing on my land. Here's some more. The smell is amazing. Absolutely amazing. Um, over here what we have is a bunch of grass that needs weed eated, but mixed in with it, and it's not in bloom yet, but I'm glad to have it back on my place, and that is Cosmos. Cosmos are a very late fall blooming uh, plant, and they're a great source of nectar. I always liked how uh, fine and, I guess, hairy the leaves are. Very nice plant. Um, right here what we have is some borage, which I planted this year. I bought me a quarter pound of seeds and I kind of just scattered them everywhere. So we got one there, we got one there, we got more Cosmos there. Virginia Mountain Mint. And then if we walk up here to the corner of my driveway where it turns to go back out to the road, and I need to get in here and pull some weeds, but there's a lot of uh, borage in here. As you can see, Mr. Bumble's working it. So, uh, a follower, Tony Robinson, I uh, want to thank you for uh, recommending this plant. I am glad I have uh, now got it on my land. I just need to get in here and uh, maybe clean this up a little bit. I got some other stuff trying to grow in with it. So that's just a few of the things I've got blooming besides the clover that I've got coming up in different parts of the yard. And uh, the bees are very happy to have these extra sources. And I wanted to share them with you today just in case some of you new beekeepers weren't familiar with some of them. Maybe it's a way to help you identify them. So there you go, folks. I hope this video has been enlightening to you, maybe a little bit educational, and I hope you kind of enjoyed it. If you did, please throw me a big thumbs up, and that'll help boost it in the YouTube search ranks and make it easier for other beekeepers to find. And hey, if you liked the video, why not subscribe? And if you have done so, make sure you click on the little bell so that you get notified when I release new videos. Thanks for watching, and hey, I want to draw you down below, check out my merch store. I've got it linked in the video description right at the very top. So check that out, um, let me know what you think. If you see anything in there you like, or maybe you have an idea for some merch you want to throw at me. I appreciate you watching, and we'll see you next Sunday at 7 a.m. Be there or be 